Hello, welcome back to the Art Channel. This week, Joshua and myself will be looking at an exhibition of two artists, two female artists, Yayo Kusama and Louise Bourgeois at Sotheby's S2 in London. Both artists have had a huge influence on art making in the 20th and 21st century, and we're going to explore uh, their common themes, gender, sexuality, the body, memory, mental illness, and really uh, negotiating life as a female artist. So here we're looking at one of Kusama's infinity nets. This one is uh, acrylic on canvas, made in 2015. And this is a series of paintings that she keeps coming back to. This obsessional covering of the surface. And as she says, there's no beginning, centre or end. These kind of tiny curled paint marks which coalesce into sort of busy parts and, uh, and peaceful parts. And I think to some extent they are her dealing with these hallucinations that she's had since she was a child. Formerly they're very simple, the covering of the entire canvas, a field of loops of black on this underlying red. But they are quite challenging, you know, what is she saying here? Why is she making them and what does she want to sort of articulate? Well I think, as you suggested, it's very personal, it's very private, it relates to trauma in adolescence and a degree of uh, seeing visions. Mm. So this is a way, I think, of mastering uh, these sort of uh, challenges that she faces. It becomes therapeutic. Um, there is a way in which she can kind of expel her demons by visualizing it and then expressing them materially. Mm. Beside this, we've got one of Bourgeois' spiders. Um, I think possibly she's most famous for the huge installation at Tate Modern when it opened. But this is a small piece and refers to um, her relationship with her mother, a very powerful person, um, somebody she described as her best friend. This one is steel with little uh, marble eggs. And of course she comes from, uh, or came from a family of people who dealt in and repaired tapestries. So this is idea of spiders and weaving and nests and traps, I suppose. Well, the connection is very nice, isn't it, between the spider that weaves this uh, resourceful, sort of slightly abject insect that has, nevertheless, um, both maternal and predatory instincts. And there's that connection in terms of the making and weaving and extending itself in space that we see in the Ayukasama painting. Um, so, Bourgeois is addressing this history of anxiety and neurosis uh, in quite a different way, sculpturally here, formally in this insect. But uh, Yoko Kusama echoes mm. some of those interests, doesn't she? We have one of Louise Bourgeois's assemblages within a vitrine. Uh, it's called Untitled of 1998. And if we look closely, we can see a stuffed glove and then behind these little filled sacks that have a strong kind of allusion to breasts, really, to the feminine body. And then there are two glass orbs of different sizes stacked one above the other. They're kind of perfect in their completeness and symmetry, aren't they? But effectively what we're looking at is a fragmented body, this upright form with these extensions coming off it, but not wholly complete, mm. are they? I think this is really exciting. I love this piece of work. You're right, there's this um, incredibly dainty opera glove hanging there against these two blue spheres, absolutely beautiful, beautiful colour. Um, I'm reminded that the colour of poison bottles was always blue, so I kind of think of that. And at the back, this beautiful kind of uh, little string of beads. And these very strange, um, almost cankers, parts of bodies or breasts or growths at the back. And it is a, it's a beautiful piece of bricolage. It's, it's truly a surrealist piece of work. And you can see that she came out of that tradition. Absolutely. I and mean, here she's thinking about the body, not only as a set of kind of anatomical relationships, but also as a, a kind of marker for the psyche. Um, there's this duality between the mind and the body, and neither are complete or holistic. They are damaged, they wear uh, the wounds of, of the past, of memory. And I think that lies fundamental in her work. Um, it's very 
uh, sort of apparent in these extraordinary sculptural sort of odds and ends that she places together. I mean, you're right, they always tap into her childhood, into her trauma, and again, we go back to the title of the exhibition. But I think if we only think of them in that way, we do them a disservice. They are truly an exploration, and I think she's always been an innovator. These are difficult and awkward and beautiful and nasty all at the same time. They, they ask us to question, and I think that's, um, that's a piece of work that stays in your mind. So here we're looking at uh, two small pieces, both conceived in the 1960s. This one by Bourgeois Germinal and this one by Kusama Golden Shoe. Uh, very different in their uh, construction, but tackling similar themes, this idea of the phallus of the body. Although in this piece, this beautiful bronze piece by Bourgeois, she does talk about conflating the penis and the breast into this kind of biomorphic form, which appears in lots of the work. In fact, this wasn't made until the 90s, so it's a, it's a theme she keeps returning to. I think uh, of all the works in the exhibition, these are the most Freudian. The, the Germinal speaks to me of a kind of eruption of neurosis, of repression, of buried memory, as if uh, trauma and feeling cannot be repressed and denied. And Kasama here is addressing this extraordinary sort of underlying anxiety about men and the male body. And so she makes these works that she called uh, accumulations, these stuffed phallic-like um, soft objects that protrude from furniture and from articles of clothing. She comes back to the shoe a lot, doesn't she? she um, she's fascinated with using the shoe um, as a kind of metaphor for her feelings about sex. And actually she talks about having very difficult relationships. But I think they're interesting in, in, the, in the kind of contrast. Of course they have lots in common. But I think Bourgeois had a very um, complicated and interesting relationship with the idea of feminism. Sometimes she said a piece of work was overtly feminist. Sometimes she distanced herself from a feminist movement. But both artists have been uh, deeply associated with um, uh, women's art in the 21st century, in the 20th century. I don't think it's accidental that both these female artists are concerned very much with the body and the experience of occupying a body, mm. of thinking about uh, the kind of cycles of the body, of, in Bourgeois' case, giving birth as a mother, um, and Kasama expressing this tension in relationship to men, a certain degree of fear, really, mm. about the male body, which he then kind of attempts to negate or uh, control through physical expression here. I think they are, they are, as we've discussed, very important artists because they are, um, you know, they both moved from repressive homes, repressive societies. They both went to New York 20 years apart, but they wanted to find their way in a fairly macho art world and really sort of you know, stuck to their guns. They made work that was really about their experience, um, about being female in a, in a very kind of male world. Here we have a work called Increment in the Spring by Yoyo Kasama. It's made in 1986. And we have this very emphatic box as the frame covered with her characteristic dots of various sizes. But within, you see this extraordinary profusion of growth, of fertility. Um, and she employs this um, various media, including fabric and plastics, and string here. It's an extraordinary environment, isn't it, of um, rather disturbing growth and projection. You're right, it's got all of her sort of signature um, items going on. You've got this dotty box, this polka dot box. The polka dots appear all through her career. And this kind of very strange box, full of phalluses, basically, um, covered in decoration. There's rope, but interestingly, there's also beads. There are painted beads that kind of decorate and loop around these objects. And I do think, I think there's, I think there's some humour in this. I think it is, it is out there. It is quite kitsch. And I think there's some fun in it as well. She is obviously looking at her relationship with her body, with the male body, those kind of difficult things in her life. But it is a box crammed full of sort of fun. You can't ignore it. Um, and it's very, it's very decorative, actually. 
It's an interesting point you make because ostensibly we're looking at a visual representation of the uh, kind of war of the sexes, mm. this antagonism um, that's almost a uh, kind of um, antagonistic dance. But here she satirizes it mm. to some extent. But nevertheless, I think there is um, still an underlying anxiety and fear uh, that she is speaking of. Um, I mean, the way in which this box is so compressed full of these wild gyrations, of these uh, protruding objects, it's as if she's um, being assaulted by a wall of mm. these um, spears. I don't know. I think I'm going to have to disagree with you. I think, I think you can have serious fun. Mm. I think you can tackle serious subject matter, which obviously this is a, a lasting preoccupation of hers. But I think it is, it's a lot less elegant and spare than some of the other pieces that she's made. And I'm sure that's deliberate. It is too much. Um, you know, you can't get your head or your eyes around all of it. And I think that's very deliberate. And, I mean, we should also acknowledge this notion of fertility. Um, there's something quite kind of primal mm. about it, as if it's a representation of uh, reproduction, of uh, biology and instinct, um, but presented alongside notions of other variations of growth and reproduction. Here we're looking at a piece by Bourgeois um, called Untitled Brackets Hearts, and this is made in 98. This is quite disturbing. Um, we've got two kind of oversized rubber hearts hanging, and of course we're used to one heart, so immediately we're in surrealist territory when we have two hanging together. It looks as if they've been cast uh, from something that's been stitched. There are stitch marks down the side here, so they look repaired or damaged. And to me, they look like something you would see hanging in a very old-fashioned butcher's shop or something. There's something very raw, as if they've been cut out of a, a body, really, mm. a, an animal body, perhaps a human one. They are on a very large scale. But they also speak of a bourgeois interest in symmetry and duality that you see as a recurring theme through her work. Um, this notion of balance, mm. but of course, balance of two elements that are highly confronting, that remind us of mortality, while at the same time uh, addressing energy mm -hmm. and the kind of pulse of life. So they are curious and uncanny, aren't they? Suspended they are. from the ceiling, yeah. hanging in front of yeah. us from in, within this room. I like the idea that she's tackling a real old cliche, loves, love hearts, all of those kind of visual um, and sentimental cliches we have, but she comes back to a very sort of um, down-to-earth reality. They, as you say, do look like they've just been removed uh, and uh, are sort of hanging in front of us to kind of challenge us, I think. She reminds us of the body being composed of sinew and muscle and blood. Uh, because, of course, they are metaphors, but at the same time, they are very much organs uh, that sustain life. So this is a really interesting show. It's curated, so it's not like a typical auction that you would find at Sotheby's, but rather a very uh, focused and considered approach to two seminal artists who are very much addressing shared interests around the experience of being women, of their bodies, addressing sexuality, but also the subconscious and the shadow of uh, fear and anxiety and troubled memories. I think it's an absolutely fascinating comparison. It's a really amazing look at these two artists who um, were uh, really very influential. And I think it's really interesting because they are constantly exploring and shifting and testing. There's this use of mundane materials. There's, as you say, a look at the subconscious. There's connections with pop art, minimalism, abstraction, surrealism. Mm. So they, they are interesting in and of themselves, but also the sort of tentacles that lead out to other art movements is really very interesting. Although they do chart their own course, don't mm. they? They are difficult to label to classify as belonging to particular art movements. They draw on so many different artistic um, ideas 
and uh, material expression through the 20th century, but nevertheless they are wholly kind of unique on their own terms. And this dialogue between them is interesting, you know, because they overlap, but also formally they are quite distinct in terms of the nature of the work. It's sometimes difficult to pair artists purely on gender, but this exhibition mm. works because it explores their relationship perhaps with each other, with uh, each other's art making, but also their differing approaches to uh, the things that form their art making, basically their childhood traumas. And lastly, their work feels very confessional and honest and introspective. Uh, their art speaks of a lifelong journey for self-understanding and the way in which they can connect outwards, bring this experience to an audience. Thank you for watching this film on the Art Channel. Please do subscribe using the red button on the screen. You can also follow us on social media, on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram.